For most of us, airports are merely a gateway to somewhere else. But what happens if you miss your flight? How long can you actually survive in an airport before getting kicked out? A day? Five months? Well, believe it or not, some people actually have been able to sneak around for close to 20 years. How is that even possible? And could we do it? Let's find out. For you and me, an overnight airport stay is torture. But for one particular dude called Meron Karimi Nasiri, aka Sir Alfred Meron, that doesn't even come close. Ready for it? Meron, an Iranian man by birth, found himself surviving at Paris's massive Charles de Gaulle Airport for a freaking insane 6,518 days. From July 1998 to August 2006. If your calculator's broken, that's close to 18 years. So how the heck did Meron do it? Well, think about it for a second. What couldn't you live without? Go ahead, shout it out. Electricity. Toilet. Food. Water. Yep, well, Charles de Gaulle, like most major airports, serves all of these up on a silver platter. The food might be overpriced, but at least it's edible and not salmonella-ridden. Here's the big question, though. How did he actually end up stuck there? Well, back in the day, Moran was studying in the UK, and he allegedly participated in student protests against the last Shah of Iran, which is like the king. The Iranian government got wind of this and were seriously mad, so when he went back to Iran in 1977, they threw him in jail, then later exiled him from Iran for what they considered conspiring against the government. Damn. After scouring Europe for countries that would take him in, he eventually was given refugee status. That's good. But then, clumsy Moran lost his official documents. That's bad. And without them, no country would let him in. On the other hand, they couldn't kick him out either. He hadn't actually done anything illegal. So why didn't they just extradite him from the airport? Well, because the airport technically is international territory. He couldn't leave the airport without documents, and he couldn't get documents without leaving the airport. So it became an endless, vicious cycle. So how did Meran actually afford to stay alive? Well, for the first few years, he was living off of his savings. But then, as word started to spread about his unique situation, people from all over the globe started sending him cash. By this stage, he'd become a celebrity. Finally, toward the end of his incredible journey, he published his autobiography, called The Terminal Man. And since that became an instant hit, the cash continued to roll in. DreamWorks ended up buying the rights to the story, which Steven Spielberg's 2004 film The Terminal, starring Tom Hanks, was based on. And they sent Moran a fat check of $250,000 for it. Okay, so we had the money, but what about everything else? It turns out that he scrubbed himself in the airport bathrooms, hung out on his very own red bench, and had his luggage by his side the entire time. So he had access to clothes. What did he eat? Well, mostly McDonald's. We wonder how many Happy Meal toys he collected over the years. Oh, and the airport staff occasionally bought him food as well, because as you can imagine, 18 years is a solid amount of time to develop a friendship. To make sure that he kept his mind active, Meron would spend most of his hours reading, writing in his diary, and even studying economics. You know what's perhaps the most amazing part of this whole story? About 11 years into his airport life, he was actually offered a free pass to live in France but he thought that they were screwing with him and that it was all a trap, so he turned it down. There's no way we could last that long in an airport. Could you? Let us know in the comments. While Moran's is the most famous story, it certainly isn't the only one. Currently, a dude by the name of Denis Luis de Souza has set up shop over in Sao Paulo's Guarulhos International Airport in Brazil and he's been watching planes fly in and out since the turn of the century. That's a whopping 19 years, people. Holy moly! Unlike Moran, living out of the airport is actually a choice for Dennis. As a Brazilian citizen, he has the legal right to come and go as he pleases. But because of terrible troubles back home, he decided to take refuge in the airport, with a few trips out into the real world here and there. Want a few more names just to prove that these weren't just flukes? Sure thing, why the heck not? A Kenyan man by the name of Sanjay Shah called Nairobi Airport home for a year and two months. Tetsuya Abo from Japan found himself living out of his bag at Sheremetyevo International Airport for 72 days after he was denied political asylum in Russia. And American whistleblower Edward Snowden, who, long story short, leaked highly classified information from the National Security Agency, was forced to live out of that same Russian airport for 39 days after the USA tore up his American passport.
Ouch. So you get the idea. While living out of airports isn't ideal by any means, a number of people have done it successfully and have lived to tell the tale. But could you or I actually do it if we wanted? Is it legal? Let's say that you decided to call, mm, I don't know, Los Angeles International home. What happens if you get caught? Aren't there rules that say we can't just set up camp in Terminal 2 rent-free whenever we darn well feel like it? Well, there's no clear yes or no answer to that. It depends on a number of factors, depending on which airport, the size of it, whether it's international or local, and if you're actually doing something illegal or not. For example, Charles de Gaulle is a massive international airport, which is classified as international territory. So unless you've committed a crime, considering that the airport stays open 24-7, they can't arrest you for just hanging out. In some cases, smaller local airports have designated closing times and are run under local laws, meaning that buff security can come up to you at any time and ask you to leave without notice. Ha! Well, Mr. Security Man, you'll have to catch us first. Where do you think the best place to hide out in an airport would be? Where would you go to escape security if they were after you? Anyway, where were we? Ah, uh, yeah, getting in trouble. So, assuming that the beefy airport security won't actually boot you out onto the streets over in LAX, there's still a number of things you have to be wary of. Can we get arrested? Well, yes. You can definitely end up holding back tears behind bars and being asked to cough if you do the wrong thing. But in most cases, it's only if you've technically done something illegal. If you've entered the country legally or are a citizen, then unless you've stolen a loaf of bread or decapitated a dude, you'll be fine. However, there are still things to be aware of. If you don't want to get booted out, consider this the Surviving at Airports Handbook. Number 1. Obviously, don't leave your luggage unattended, because that'll welcome an unexpected visit from high-tech bomb decoding robots or cute little sniffer dogs. In fact, just stay away from the B word altogether. Number two, don't cause a scene and disturb other travelers. Airports, just like military bases, can have stricter rules than the average public place, and you often won't realize until you've broken one. Number three, leave the tear gas at home, people. Number four, don't argue with the airport staff. They all talk, and if they're letting you crash on the chairs, just do what they say. Oh, and number five, make sure that you're sleeping in an area that's got video cameras. It might feel weird to know that you're being watched Big Brother style, but hey, it means that you'll be safer. Okay, so except for Dennis from Brazil, most of the people we talked about had no choice but to fight for survival in airports. However, what if we were simply given the option? Hypothetically, if we wanted to drop everything, quit our boring jobs, and create a lifestyle similar to Tom Hanks in the terminal, maybe even including falling in love with a stunning flight attendant, which airports should we consider as a starting point? Let's start off with the obvious. Singapore's Changai Airport. If you're looking for sophistication, look no further. Changai is clean, futuristic, full of entertainment and comfort, and it honestly looks like something straight out of the Jetsons. It's been welcoming and impressing jet setters for a number of years and is constantly sitting atop the list of the world's best airports. Independent said so, Forbes has said so, and even the official World Airport Awards have said so. The carpet is silky soft enough to count a few sheep, or better yet, there are actually snooze lounges in each terminal that offer comfortable reclining chairs. So if you're planning on surviving in an airport, this would be at the top of the list. After Singapore's Changi, Incheon International Airport in Korea, that's the friendly Korea by the way, would be your next best move. Why? Nap zones, that's why. The airport has dedicated sleeping areas where weary travelers, or people trying to live there, can get some much needed shut-eye. The recliners might not be lined with Egyptian cotton sheets, but it could be worse you could be sleeping out in the pouring rain. There's also free showers. And if you literally can't survive without a round of golf, then the international business area has an 18-hole putting green. If you prefer Europe, then Munich's airport has plenty of rest zones to live in comfortably and let the months fly by, as well as mini hotel rooms called nap cabs. They're not cheap, but if you're rolling in the dough, they could definitely provide a good home base. Meanwhile, over on American home soil, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport in Texas offers luxurious so-called minute suites, which we would happily chill in for a few days. While over in the golden city of San Francisco, there's an abundance of places to set up a makeshift bed, and even the chance to get some yoga in. Just because we're surviving in an airport, it doesn't mean that we need to neglect our weekly yoga classes. Take one more sip of air. And down to heart center, and namaste. That's all for how long people have actually survived in airports. So, how long could you last? Let us know in the comments. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to The Richest, and join our notification squad. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.